everyone welcome to watch it paint it today i'm doing something a little bit special got something exciting for you i'm painting hellboy from hellboy the board game by mantic games they were super kind sent me a prototype resin miniature from the game that's currently on kickstarter i will leave a link in the description below if anyone would like to check that out but it's currently over 100 miniatures loads more stretch goals being unlocked hellboy it's looking very exciting over a thousand percent funded the grit game looks pretty great and who doesn't love the the ip for hellboy unless you're scott from patreon who doesn't seem to know what hellboy is must have been living under a rock or something finally I'm just showing you some of the sort of painted up models that they've already got obviously this is a professional artist don't expect the quality of this video to be the same but i wanted to show you what people can achieve with them let's get started painting our first off i'm going to show you the miniature as i mentioned this is a prototype it's a resin copy so I think that means the detail is going to be slightly higher in this version, but there's no reason they can't get the plastic to this. We'll have to wait and see when the, the game gets produced. But straight off the bat, this does look super detailed and an absolute fantastic model before I've even started painting. That looked really, really nice. We're going to start with Gory Red. That's by Vallejo. Now, I haven't primed this, and I think with resin, you can semi get away without priming, but... Nevertheless, I'm, I'm going to use the Vallejo game color range, which can work as a base coat and a primer in one. So I'm just cheating. I, I have this problem a lot, just painting individual models. I don't have the time to go and set up a sort of spray factory in the garden every time I paint some. But I'm going to use the game color. Anyway, red, nice bright red. We're going to be painting all of his skin. So his face, his chest, his knees and his tail and one of his hands, his big um, obsidian hand there that big rock hand on his right hand uh, his, his left arm is showing through as well which i do miss actually uh, but i pen that off camera and you can imagine how how that goes down just a little bit on the arm that's poking out between his glove and his sleeve next i'm going to use i i've always pronounced this car kick and it might not be pronounced like that and i meant to look that up before i started talking about this video it might be khaki and that might be a us uk difference but a sandy brown, please. Sandy brown for his um, overcoat, his big, long overcoat. So, so far, I've just been using my regiment brush by the Army Painter. This is a, this is a big model. This is a bigger scale than I'm used to. This ain't no 28 mil. I don't quite know what the scale is, but he's fairly large compared to what I'm used to painting. I'm going to use Necromancer Cloak. So as I'm here, I'm demonstrating that you can just paint straight onto resin. And it does work with this color, at least by the Army Painter, this one. And this is a dark grey and I'm just going to be painting in his hot pants in this colour and just making them look like the, the reference art I had at hand. And also I think it's just a really nice colour to contrast with everything else that I've painted so far. The red and the, the, the pale brown and then this really, really dark grey is just going to really make those shorts stand out from the rest of the model. You guys will have to let us know in the comments below if you're back in this game, if you're excited about it, what you think. I feel like I'm always a little bit biased when it's a UK company make producing a game. Next colour up is Earth by Vallejo. I'm going to try and use mostly Vallejo colours here. I'm just, I'm missing a dark grey and a black really, so I do have to switch back to the Army Painter even though I want to use the game colour range for this. But Earth, it's a sort of a leathery brown colour, I guess. I feel like it's more leathery brown than their leather brown colour range, uh, colour choice. So that's why I'm using that here. And this is just paint his utility belt, all those pouches he's got around his waist, his holster for his gun. Anything else? There's, there's just a ton, ton of stuff around his crotch to paint. I'm also going to catch any of the metals on his crotch there. He's got a cross hanging down, but that's just to make it easier to paint over later. And then he's got one hand with a glove on. So his left hand's got a glove. I'm going to paint that the same colour. And then also these boots, these leather esque boots that he's wearing i think they are it was kind of difficult to see what color that was but i'm just tying it in i have that rule of thumb where i try not to use too many colors on a, on a miniature i feel like three colors is quite a good good amount this has gone to four with the with the pants really as well or the shorts sorry um but four is okay that's acceptable it's a bigger miniature than normal so i think you can get away with that and then we'll add some detail coloring so I don't count these. Machine Gun Metal, that's by the Army Painter. That's the dark silver. I'm going to be adding in the metallics for him. So he's got a chain holding a cross down, down his waist. Then I'm going to paint in all of the belt buckles. I'm using my insane detail brush for this, this part. This is 
quite detailed work. It's not that small, but it's small enough and I'm a bit wobbly and I was rushing to get this done knowing I'm going on vacation soon and wanted to get this out before I went away. He's also got his badge on his coat jacket and I'm also going to do his Magnum base coat in this color too. If you don't know, I do also have a Twitch channel and I did actually live stream this. The quality is not as good as here because my internet is the actual worst, but at least you got to see it in, in live time and a lot of people were helping me pick some colors while we were streaming that and you get to watch it twice. You get to watch it in slow motion and this speed. So do check out my Twitch channel if you get a chance. Terracotta's next. That's a dark, dark red, like an almost ready brown. And that's just a paint on his sawn off ho uh, horns, hulls. Well, he's, not, he's not a ship, horns. And just making them stand out just a tiny bit, not too much. Just, just wanted a subtle difference there. And then this is the second army painter color I need to use. This is dead black. I just don't have the Vallejo one. So I'm just painting in the, the sort of claws coming out of his hooves there. Uh, just adding a little bit of detail and same, uh, I'm going to do his, his hair black. I think he's got black hair, if I recall correctly. And he's got a little tiny tufty goatee as well. So just a little dash on his chin, painting on the back of his head as well there. This black's just not going on quite as well on the resin as the previous colours. Uh, Necromancer's cloak was fine. I feel like this black's maybe just watered down a little too much. So it's taking quite a little, uh, quite a few like touches up to get that to settle properly. Then we're on to shading. So that was the base coat completely finished. And I've chosen to shade him more like the cartoony versions, really dark, dark cartoon style. So I'm using Survivor Shader. That's the black shader by Army Painter. And I'm going to be applying that to all of his skin and his hair. Just really, it's just tidying up his hair. It doesn't need it. And then I'm also going to do it to his gun as well and really make that pop out. So it's going to take quite a lot of time to apply this. I'm being quite careful. That is my detail brush that I'm using. So I, I do not want this to pull anywhere. I'm trying to be quite precise. I am applying it to all of his skin because I would like to just darken it just a little bit, but I'm making sure none of it settles anywhere except the recesses. And even then, once once I'd finished painting this on camera, I kept a close eye on him off camera, made sure as that shader ran down his body, I just de-pooled it from places I didn't want it to be sort of around his waist. It was gathering and you know backs of knees and stuff like that. Next shader is going to be the deep shader. That's a dark brown shader by the Army Painter. And that's now I've got my regiment brush out. I'm being a lot, a lot less precise here. And I'm going to be applying that to all of that term earth that I painted previously. So that's his utility belt, his gun holster, his boots, and that glove on his left hand as well. And then around the back, just catching what you can see through there. For the final shade, I'm going to use zombie shader. That's a lighter brown shader. It's almost gray. It looks gray when it comes out the pot. I think it's supposed to be light brown and I'm just gonna be painting all that khaki, khaki, all of his coat. I'm just gonna go around that. Again, regiment brush, but I'm being super, super careful. I've watered this down a little bit, probably about 25% water. And then I'm just really, really lightly applying this to the whole coat. Again, only letting it pool in the recesses. I'm just darkening it ever so slightly so I can highlight from that point. And here I'm just gonna show you how he looks after all of those shades of dry. A lot of you might want to stop here. That that looks good, right? Like that was not a lot of work. That's probably about an hour's work to this point in total. And you could say he was done at this point, but if you're feeling more confident, if you do want to do the highlights, that's what we're going to be doing next. Follow along. Glory Red's out first. I'm now switched to my Rosemary and Co brushes. These are brand new and I'm really, really, really liking them so far. They've got really, really good points. I'm just trying to wear them in and make sure that point stays before I let you know too much about them. But that's why I've swapped to these now. I want to be very, very accurate. Now this paint is watered down about 50-50, so half of it's water on top of the paint. So it's quite runny, so I'm being very, very careful to make sure it doesn't run into any of those recesses. But I'm going around the model and painting all of his raised parts. So across his face, we're talking about his lips his nose, his cheekbones, and his brow, and then down his chest, that's the easy bit, his pecs and all of his abs, each one of those just painting in the base color entirely, just leaving that shade in the very, very edges, the recesses. Then on his knees, I'm painting each part of his bones and muscles, and his tail, I'm just painting a sort of line along and blending that in. And then on his forehead and his, his, his bald head, just giving him a shine spot on the back, and the obsidian arm, just painting each one of those sections sort of in between all the cracks, just back in. It's 
this is the this is the longest part of the paint job. It's not difficult. This, as I mentioned, this model the scale is quite big and the detail is fantastic. So it's really, really, really easy to paint that in as I wanted. Then I'm going to mix some bloody red with that glory red, about 50/50, and I'm now going to go around basically the whole process again. This time, very, very carefully painting the sort of centers of all of those parts now. So the centers of his well, the it, on his pecs it was down the outside middle. On his abs, it's all the centers. On his face, it's the sort of tip of his nose, the tip of his cheekbones, the, the edge of his lips. Tail, again, I'm just painting down the center of that line I painted in previously. And then it's the exact same on his knees. Again, this paint is going to be nicely watered down, so it's blending in. I'm able to blend it towards the edge where I painted on the previous coat. Just match that up nicely. And then finally, for his obsidian fist, his power fist, his punching fist, I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing. I'm going to be using just my dry brush so the same the same mixture of paint and just catching it very very lightly along that fist and then earth is back out and we're going to be just highlighting in the same way that we did the skin but we're going to be doing all the earth places earth spots uh that's his gun holster his belt along all those pouches some straps that are around his shorts uh his boot and his glove as well just going around and bringing out all of the edges bring that color back into that i'm wondering what i'm going to do with this model when i'm done i've, I've noticed I've started collecting quite quite a collection of prototype models that I've painted up and some that I've just not had time to paint. So anybody following along, I do have a Patreon and I have added a stuff pledge. I need to give that a better name, I think. But basically, periodically, this is the sort of stuff I'm intending to send out to the people on that level. I think there'll be merchandise, dice, models, painted models, unpainted models, random things from the channel. If anyone's interested, do check out my Patreon and check out that stuff level. This will be added to the stuff collection that I will be sending out. Necromancer cloak back out, back to that dark gray, just going around all of the raised parts of his shorts. So that's the edge of each of his legs. And then there's loads of folds down the shorts. So just catching all of those. And then on his hair, just catching any raised parts of his hair with this, just bringing it up some brightness. And I also caught both edges of his sort of hoof toe things there. And then we're going to mix in 50% filthy suit. That's the lighter gray by the army painter and just edge highlight now. So we'll just do a thin line on each toe, a thin line on the edge of his shorts, as well as all of those folds. And then on his beard, on his, uh, what do you call those side burns? There we go. I have side burns. How can I not remember these words, but I'm just catching the edge of those as well. Claymore blades out and that's the light silver by army painter. And I'm just going to go in around edge highlighting the silver that we painted in machine gun metal previously. So that's his badge on his side, this chain with his uh, cross on it and his magnum. And he's got a key as well dangling down from his magnum. There's also a bunch of studs. There's buckles on all of his belts and some studs. He's got buttons down the side of his coat and buttons on the back. Khaki or khaki's out once more. I'm using my Rosemary and Co and I'm using the edge of the brush. I should have slowed this down a little bit for you. Apologies, but basically the brush is side onto the model and that's allowing me to catch paint without going into any of the recesses. As I mentioned, this model is nicely detailed and it's got lots and lots of raised parts of this coat. So it's almost like dry brushing. I'm just catching the raised parts, but it, the brush isn't dry and the paint's going on super, super easily and quickly. Sun yellow's out. That's by Vallejo. I'm using my insane detail brush. I'm just going to dot him in two yellow eyeballs just as carefully as I can. As normal with eyes, it's a little bit fiddly, but adjust the model, angle it, swap it round when you're doing the left eye, if you're right-handed sort of thing, turn him upside down, whatever works, just get nice careful dots in there. And that's it. That is Hellboy completely finished. It took me about an hour and 39 minutes, which I think is pretty good going. I'm, I'm proud of that. I think I've done a decent job. I was certainly rushing. I've got that vacation coming up. I seem to always have a vacation. I think I just talk about it a lot more now. I've got a YouTuber and it seems to be much more of a big deal getting the content ready for you guys. Anyway, let me know if you're back in the game. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments below. I will leave a link in the description. And thank you all very much for watching.